Right, we're recording. That is good. All right, so guys, welcome back to uh, the GDC's, I believe, eighth meeting. So thank you, guys. Uh, I really love all of your determination today. And um, y yeah, uh, so before we start, uh, I would like to, you know, you know, brief out, give some meeting agenda and stuff, all the introductions, maybe some announcements. Um, first of all, I want to really apologize about the Discord scam. I know that happened a few days ago. Um, our team is still working on it so that uh, this doesn't happen again in the future. Um, it, it was quite a bad day for us because a lot of people left the server because of that. And if you have any friends who did leave the Discord server, uh, you can let them know that, well, it's fine now. We have cleared out all the problems and we have found many different ways to prevent the scam from happening. Uh, we'll soon also add some more verification levels and all that stuff to... Um, you know to the server so that this doesn't happen again but really i want to apologize because i wasn't able to see that happening i was away from my room and when i came back i saw like hundreds and thousands of notifications on my screen it's like yo what just happened and yeah it all happened at once and I, just, I i cannot really comprehend what happened so yeah about that uh if you and just 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 for anyone who doesn't know um just please if you see any uh, discord nitro thing that any link that has anything affiliated with Nick discord nitro please do not click on a link uh, usually you get a gift, you get a Discord Nitro, and whenever you're gifted, you get it as an embed message. You never get it from a website. So, please, if you get any link about getting free Discord Nitro, please do not do that. Otherwise, your account could get hacked. I mean, you will get hacked, and uh, you might have to deactivate it, which is kind of a bummer for all of us. So, please, please spread this word to everyone. This is a really a serious problem on Discord, and uh, since this is a community server, chances are also a bit higher um, that scams like these could happen in the future. But Again, in the future, if there are any problems like this, please uh, please consult us in the ticketing system, in the ticketing channel on Discord. I will show that right away right now. And let me just click on the screen so you guys can see it. Um, so if you see up here, I ha uh, the GDC team and I, we have developed this place called the ticketing system. And basically, you just need to write ticket and put, put this in box parentheses, the problem that we do. And then I'll be notified right away whenever you guys have any requests and stuff. And I can there, from there, uh, from anywhere in the world, I can get notified instantly that something went wrong. And it, it's just a great way to communicate with the support team for GDC. All right. So, yeah, that, that's, that, this is like one of the safest ways to uh, do things right on Discord. All right. Um, and also, you want, I have also added some uh, new uh, rules. Now, if you're part of the GDC team, you can officially be part of this competition as well this uh me 6 xp so this means that also gdc team people could get a discord nitro as their prize as well so this is i guess in addition to probably some um competition for the gdc members already so that means you guys have more competition with people uh from the gdc team all right but again just to clear it out no one gets any supremacy on anything everyone gets an equal opportunity everyone gets an equal amount of xp so that shouldn't be a problem all right um also um, I would like to notify that um, <laughs> there's actually there was an assignment for those who have actually submitted the assignment I really thank you it really means a lot to me but if you go to submissions right now if you do if you do want to get a free instant 1500 XP um, just go ahead go ahead and make an embed message uh, copy my code and some of you guys haven't done this so please make sure you do comment your name and comment your date and comment the topic okay make sure you do that and literally just copy paste the entire code, okay? And if you do that, well, maybe you might have to uh, change some stuff, but like, if you do that, you're gonna instantly get a free 1,500 XP, all right? So some of you guys weren't able to do it, so try to like, you know, DM someone and then take a screenshot of that and paste it. But I will not permit giving any uh, XP if you haven't given any uh, documentation of that of this being belonging to you, okay? So make sure that you do mention that you, you comment something on top that your name or anything that so that I can know that this is actually from you and that way I will give you 1500 XP so those who haven't done it like IQ and Oli make sure you do that soon and then you're gonna get your 1500 XP and for those who actually still want to do this um, you have opportunity till like the end of the class today to do that and after that it's out okay I'm not gonna give any XP anymore regarding this all right uh next i'm gonna talk about the game all right so the 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 maze game that we're doing i think we'll complete this essentially in three meetings and the next three meetings we'll be finishing this and we're being we're going to move on to our next game project which is a rocket ship thing okay 
And also during the October break, I know that a lot of school students have an October break. Just to notify you all, we do have a meeting next week as well. So please do join if you do have your time, okay? And uh, yeah, just, just getting that away. Um, there is going to be an award, okay? Now, you want to hear this out. This is very specific. All of you, when the when we finish this game project, all of you will need to submit some kind of video, okay? It could be like a 30-second video or anything. You might have to send a link, like a Google Drive link, because a lot of you guys may not have Discord Nitro, so um, the file size will be really constrained for you. So you might have to send a link of a YouTube video or anything and send it in the submissions channel. And what will happen is the GDC team and I, even the admins, we will decide on which game is the most creative in terms of game mechanics, uh, which also incorporates really great uh, design structures and what incorporates really great in terms of art. And collecting that together, that person will be the winner of the Game Design Award. So this is just kind of a fun thing we're doing. This is not like a big ceremony or any competition. This is just for fun. But here's the price, and I think you're going to get shocked. The award is 10,000 Me 6 XP. All right, sink that in. 10,000 Me 6 XP and 50,000 GDC coins. All right, just sink that in. Yeah, 50,000 GDC coins. So take this seriously. If you do want to get that Discord night show, be sure to compete in this. You're going to do it. And this also applies to the GDC team. Uh, if the GDC team members also want to participate in this, you can. And you can also get that night show in the future if you'd like. All right. So that's that. If you would like any more information about that, I will add more about it later on in the announcement later today. Um, but for now, I think I'm going to keep it a bit more abstract because I still need to get more details about it. So don't worry about the details right now. I'll share it out later today regarding about regarding it. Okay. Finally, one more assignment. Good job, Oli. I like that. Uh, uh, one more one more thing is I have made some updates, a new addition. All right. I have added some new roles, okay? So if you see my role on the right here, right? You can see that, wait, now there are new roles. You need C Sharp support, Unreal C++ support, uh, Python support, Java support. You can actually get these new roles over here in the role select. So I think if you press the alien, you're going to get the Unity support and, what, and other things regarding from what you see over here. So this is pretty much self-explanatory. But what I want to tell what these things do is it kind of, um, it kind of uh, clears out. It organizes this workspace. So whenever... Whenever someone needs help, like in the Unity channel, you can ping uh, this Unity C Sharp support for any time you need any help. And somebody who has that role will be able to help you when you can. Okay, so that's basically that. You can ping the C Sharp support and basically that person can help you. This is because I don't want anyone to ping my name. Um, I, I think I've pretty much cleared that out in the rules. Please do not ping any admins or the people, including me, so like RR or anyone. And also, please do not ping any GDC team members. Please only ping these specified roles and those who actually have, you know, volunteered to get these roles as well, okay? Obviously, these roles are free to get. So if you would like to be the CSAR supporter, uh, you could get these for free and be able to help someone once in a day. The benefit in this is that you could actually get a chance to get more XP. It's kind of like reminding you, a bit like Duolingo, right? You could be more active in the server. So if anyone needs help, you can, you know, always uh, get that role and help others in this uh, server because it is a community server and we serve to help each other, all right? So that's basically that in terms of all the announcements, okay? But before we get a lot, get uh, before I announce all the 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 meeting's agenda today, I would like to discuss about the things that we've done in the previous meeting, okay? Now I kind of recommend, okay, before we g go anywhere, I kind of recommend going to YouTube uploads and watching all of these videos, okay? A lot of people like complain, and I do understand the virtual camera of OBS kind of brings a bit of blurry image, but actually if you do watch these videos, the quality is really good. Uh, I think it's 1080p, especially this one, all right? So be sure to watch it, watch those things. It's gonna really help you out. And another thing is if I actually click on one of those videos, right? And I, um, and I pause it. You could actually see that I have made timestamps, specific timestamps for you guys. So for this video, the meeting, the video actually starts at 20 minutes around there. So you should kind of take advantage of these kinds of uh, timestamps because it's actually going to save your time. I know that these videos are like 56 minutes, almost like also sometimes an hour long. And obviously not everyone has that much time to learn, right? So be sure to take advantage of these things. Like sometimes you might not even want to hear these winner announcements because they're pretty much outdated and it won't really help you at all, right? 
So I think anything that's more like relevant to your information, just start where you want to start. So like, let's say, hey, maybe I'm good at rigid body, so we can skip that part. But maybe I need to focus a bit on if else statements. So we could actually learn this section a bit more. And basically, that's just a great way to organize your time, right? It's just a time efficiency. However, for this video, I need to work a bit about. Uh, uh, sorry, I need to work a bit more on this, um, on the timestamp. So I'll make sure that's done probably by the end of today or tomorrow. All right, but I want to make sure that every video from now on gets a timestamp so that you don't have to worry about this. For example, in this video that I'll be soon uploading, you can just ignore the first 15 minutes and just move on to the main topics that you need to talk about. All right. So speaking of previous meeting, we've talked about three things, get access, time.delta time and cinema machine. Well, we know that time.delta time, right? So if you go back to the game, we were trying to make sure that the frame rate, sorry, that the frame rate, uh, the game is independent of the frame rate. Right, because we don't want to be dependent on the frame rate. Some some computers are really good in terms of uh, spec spe specifications. Some are not. And if we depend on the frame rate, then you know the frame rate is just gonna say like, okay, at, at this many times, call the update method. Now let's say a computer, a very good computer, runs 120 FPS. Well, it's gonna run the update method 120 times in a second, right? But in another computer where it only runs like 15 FPS, it's just only going to run 15 frames, uh, 15 times every second, that update method. And it kind of becomes unfair. So to have a smooth gameplay, that kind of problem, to clear that out, we always use time.delta time, right? Then we additionally also made a cool thing, right? We made Cinema Machine. So we finally were able to uh, make a follow camera. So a camera that follows the character. And anywhere it moves, you just follow the character, which is like a typical thing uh, for a 3D uh for a 3D third person game, right? So let me just demonstrate it for you while this thing, uh, you know, uh, uh, runs. As you can see here, as I move, the camera is also moving towards the object because we selected that via this, you know, virtual follow camera, the thing that is following is this specific game object that we called character, right? So that's the kind of idea. And I also made sure that, you know, if it hits, we used collision and stuff, which we'll talk a bit more about today. Uh, and all that stuff. But the main idea was that in the previous meeting, we were able to successfully solve that problem, which will, which is basically one of the biggest things that we need to do in terms of making a third person video game, right? Um, and let's see, what else did we learn apart from anything else? We also learned about get access. So we also learned about the input manager. We've learned a more efficient and effective way in uh, calling, calling the input methods, right? So instead of saying if input.getKey, uh, get uh, get key dot up or something it's kind of saving lines in your code and it's kind of more self-explanatory when you get these things just with one word which is like a string references these are different type of axes as we mentioned in the previous video and we're calling specific type of inputs right so it's like maybe like joysticks and this essentially allows your game to be a more universal game meaning you could play it in you know playstation you could play it on consoles basically and also on pc it's kind of like a cross-platform kind of game and it's universal and that's the big thing that we need to do. We need to make sure that our game is available on as, on many platforms as possible so that we could reach the biggest marketing, so that we could achieve the marketing strategies, right? And that's how you can also essentially earn money. It's a great, great effective strategy. And this is why we should also be using the Get Access. Get Access is really, really versatile and really, really power, powerful. And yeah, we did that. We, we, we fully made use of that by moving the keys around and saving a lot of lines in code and just making it very simple to read because that's the benefit of C-sharp Unity. Unity C-sharp is different than, you know, uh, the normal C-sharp because they simplified the code using these uh, pre-made libraries, right? Like systems.collection, systems.collection.generic, using Unity Engine, all these different libraries that Unity made, it just helps simplify our code even better, right? So that we don't need to worry a lot about the coding itself, but the development of the game, which is really, really crucial. All right. So that's basically what, what we did in the previous class, all right? So now today, let me just discuss a bit about what we're going to be doing in terms of our, uh, our, our game topics. So let me just go back and let me tell you all what we need to do, all right? So the first thing that we need to do is we need to talk about collision. Um, I talked about it in a really abstract matter, uh, but as I said, we're always going to talk about it in a specific meeting, and this is the meeting. We're going to talk a lot about collision, what the topic is, uh, the benefits, why we use it, and uh, you know, you know, the, the amazing things about it. Basically, we're going to learn a lot about collision, that concept that 
that is being utilized in Unity and how it's really effective in development of games. Right? And then on, on top of that, we will learn some amazing methods like on collision enter, which is some method that we'll be getting used to today. And you can also practice those methods in your own time. Okay, and then we're also going to learn about this other thing, the second topic, which is get component. Get component in the code, as we're going to explain soon, is like you can access specific components from your game object inside of your code and manipulate them essentially, which is kind of a huge benefit if you kind of think of it. Right? And I, I don't think you might know that right now because I'm speaking really vague right now, but you will see that later in today's meeting. Then using get component, we will find a way that, you know, when, whenever the character that we made hits an obstacle in the game, the obstacle colors change. And that is actually helpful. It, it, the only way, one of the best ways that you can do that is by using the get component, which is a thing that it's a method that is made by Unity and it just helps you access components. We'll see that later a lot in today's session, right? And then finally, our one of the biggest goals today is to start forming our score system in the game. Because obviously, a game should always have some system, right? Some type of system to store your data, some way to store your success. And usually, that's always done from scores, like, you know, a point system and stuff. That's usually a game. Um, we're going to make it very simple today. Uh, we're not going to put it on screen, on UI or anything. UI is very, very difficult to do so far. So we're going to start on debug. We're going to use the console panel as we used before for inputting the keys. Um, we're going to use debug.log instead of print. Uh, and, and in the next lesson, we will try to incorporate that uh, somewhere on the screen if that's possible. But for now, we're going to use console just to understand how the scoring system works and everything like that, basically. All right, so that's basically the meeting agenda today. It's just three big things. Uh, and I will also soon post this out on YouTube so you can watch that in your later time, along with the timestamps, which is also going to save your time as well. All right, so actually, let's just begin for real now. So let me just open my uh, Google Slides. Okay, I think I am there. It's loading. Okay, so collisions. Let's talk about collisions. Interesting topic, right? So how should we start? Well, what is a collision? Well, we kind of know that a collision is just, it's like a component, right? We see that on a game object. So if we go back to, uh, to Unity, we go to a character, right? Collision is just basically some sort of component. Anything that's on the right, the inspector panel, as I said, this panel is an inspector where it stores all the components. Uh, we can see that over here, we see that one component called Box Collider. It is a type of a collision component. And that thing allows to detect collision between objects in the environment of that scene. So it just helps detect that whenever any other object in that scene is you know, touching the current object that this component is on. This is what helps detect that, basically. All right, And we should just know that it's basically a component that helps us detect collision, essentially. It's just pretty much self-explanatory from the definition itself. Um, yeah, it just helps uh, interact between game objects in the game. So it helps detect like, hey, you know, if this thing and this thing hit each other, we could do some kind of uh, statements with it and collisions with it, like bring more realism physics in it, not like it goes through each other because that just looks a bit surrealistic and fake and it's just not fun to see that in games. We want to see some, you know, some bumps against each other, some repelling uh, happening against each other. And essentially, collision does that. It helps interact between, two, uh, between all the game objects in the scene and notice that each object is independent of each other and they can notice that, hey, if these two collect, they're different objects and they should be against each other. They should be moving against each other, right? According to Newtonian physics. Um, additionally, it, yeah, as I said, so if we go back to this thing, it kind of creates some sort of boundary, right? So if I actually go here and zoom on the character. Oops, let me, that is not good. Yeah, so if I actually click on this, right? So I see that there is a object. We can see this transparent green line. Well, that is the collider. Usually what happens is, uh, you know, the collider is always built in. You should always know that collider is always built in. You don't need to really worry about adding it manually. They always come in whenever you add an object. Like if I right click and I create a 3D object or anything here, automatically all these different objects that you create, they inherently come in with these colliders based on the specific shapes you want. But the idea is that it is surrounding it. And what happens is within this within this constraint, right, that you made, 
that is the place where it helps detect collision against other objects. So you have to be very careful on how to design these constraints. Otherwise, it's not going to make your game feel real. So like, you know, if I uh, run down here and I edit, you can over here, you can also manually edit the collider. So if I click on this, I can actually start moving the collider. So you can see those, you know, dots over here. Right. So if I actually press this carefully, the thing is, it's now going to notice. So actually, that's not a good way to explain it. Yeah, so let's just say the collider was something like that. What happens is it kind of creates some offset and it won't f and and whenever, you know, this object touches the wall, well, it's going to notice over here. So it's going to feel like, well, there's a distance between each other and it feels like there's a force against each other. So it's not like actually hitting each other, but rather there's like some something in invisible that's holding each other back and it just doesn't feel real. So you need to be sure and be careful with editing your colliders. So basically the moral is, if you make any basic shapes, do not really mess around with the colliders. Otherwise you're just gonna screw up your game. But whenever that happens, just always click on edit collider and you can manually change it, all right? So this is what I did, and that's the idea. It's just some sort of boundary around it that helps detect collision against other game objects, as it says here. So as we see, this is like an example of a component that is attached on a game object, which is this. And we can see that there's a lot of things over here. There's like edit collider, which we just explained that, well, that, that's how we can manually edit the colliders around here. As, we, as you can see, those green lines around here, you can't see that because I have a red marker for some reason. Uh, but you can see that green line over here. That That is a collider, essentially, right? Um, you can also change the center. Usually, uh, you should never mess with that. Otherwise, uh, you can also cause problems with your code and stuff. So usually, just leave this as, as it is. But you can mess with it. So instead of edit collider, you could also just manually put in the numbers here if you're like working with numbers rather than physical constraint development. All right, we're going to also talk about a bit more about is trigger. Uh, a bit soon. It's a very important topic to discuss on, but the, the, the thing for now is do not worry about is trigger. We're not going to really use that at all. And in fact, uh, a lot of you guys had problems when you were developing, you know, obstacles around your environment. And in the Unity chat, some of us told me that, some of the people told me that, hey, I was having a problem that if I move the character on the obstacle, it like glitches through it. And usually the reason because of that is people turn on the is trigger. And you should just leave that off because it just caused glitches. And honestly, you should only turn it on if you need it. And we'll know what's the purpose of it later in this uh, in this lecture. All right. And the material for now, um, it's not really a big deal. And honestly, we just pe people just leave it as as it is. But it can also change the feeling of how you want things to collide with each other. But for now, it's just a simple game, so we don't need to mess around with it. Uh, if you do want to learn more about materials and stuff, you can check out uh, the documentation that I provided in Discord. So if I if you go up, I have attached a resource in resources channel. And uh, I think, yeah, I, hmm, yeah I, I believe it's this website, so you could check it out at your own time. It gives more in-depth explanation of, of, of that thing I was talking about, the, the material. Um, but for now, we don't need to worry about it because we're not going to really go over it. We're probably gonna get through that stuff during the, uh, you know, third or fourth project when we're gonna play our physical games. You might want to deal with these things if your game is on a different uh, theme. So if this game was on a water, maybe you could have a different collision kind of type. But for now, just chill out. This is not really a problem. All right. Okay. So also another thing is when you actually add a component, right? So if I go to Unity right now and I want to add a component, if I type collider, there are actually a lot of types of colliders. I think I should. Uh, move my uh, <laughs> webcam here. You can see that there's a lot of type of collider if I add the component. So you can see that, oh, well, it's not just box collider, but many other kinds. And you should kind of keep that in mind. It's not only one type of collider, it's, it's many kinds. And each type of collider is suitable for each unique type of shape, right? So if, if you made a cylindrical shape, then you should be using a cylindrical collider. Or if you have a circle, like a sphere, in the 3D environment, you should you should be using a spherical collider, not a box collider. Now, again, that's up to you. People have different reasonings, and some people use box colliders as they just don't, they, they treat the circle as a wall, and they don't want people to go past the circle. Usually people use box colliders for that, but honestly, uh, the best way to keep stuff organized is just use the shape as it is. Use the, use the appropriate shape for each type of uh, object in the scene. All right, so since this is a cube, 
you say box collect because that's it's a it's a it's a rectangular prism and it's a really it's really easy to just manipulate the stuff with it and it shouldn't waste your time but that doesn't mean like you can't be using other stuff so if i had the the square object i could you know apply a spherical collider instead of a box collider but make sure you don't have two colliders in one uh in one in in one game object otherwise that will also cause uh, problems in your in in your game development journey okay so just don't ever do it it's caused bugs it causes glitches and causes problems so just don't ever have more than one collider in each object cool all right so just make sure that the idea is the central idea is there's just many types and we just want to ignore the 2d colliders because this is a 3d game there are different uh, mechanics for 2d games so that's why they made two types of colliders one that is 3d and one that's for 2d but don't worry about 2D, just ignore those things and just stick with the one that does not say 2D on it. Uh, yeah, and it has each each of them has its own pros and cons based on how you use it in different shapes. All right. Okay, now let's actually talk about is trigger. We're not really going to get through it, but I'm going to give some scenarios on how is trigger is used. I found this answer on a Unity, Unity blog, and I think it really sums it up pretty well. So basically, they're trying to say that triggers are like some sort of colli colliders that is used uh as as some sort of signal okay so like let's say and let's say uh let's say okay yeah let's say for example you're playing a game slender man and slender man you have you have to find some eight pages right now the thing is you want to try to you want to give some action when the person is touching the paper right usually in games you just press e or something but let's just say that you have to you know you have to move towards the paper and if you collide with the paper it should be signaling something that it should the set active of that thing should go zero and the score point should go up. So this is where is trigger is technically used. It's kind of like a signal rather than a collision use. And like like let's say let's also say for doors. So if you touch some sort of rectangular thing on 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 the environment, you should give some action to it. And usually people use on trigger enter, on trigger exit, on trigger stay for all these scenarios. So usually it's used as a, some sort of signal message that. Hey, if whenever something like this happens, if I collide with something specific, uh, which is uh, which we're gonna get sooner with, uh, but if like the idea is if I collide with something that's not me, then you should be doing some action. And usually, on trigger enter, on trigger exit, and on trigger stay does these actions. All right. But again, as I said, we're not gonna be making doors and all that kind of stuff yet. It's very confusing topic, and it could be very annoying if you don't really know how to use it. But if you do, if you do want to learn more about it, you could check it out in the resources like all around Google and search it up. I'll also try to find some great resources and post them out in the resources channel so they could check it out in your own time. But for now, don't worry about this trigger. It's just very confusing. So for now, let's uh, f uh, focus on collision and this next uh, this next thing that we're gonna talk about, which is on collision enter. So speaking of on collision enter, all right. Um, <laughs> that's actually funny because we were just talking about on collision enter. Uh, this is this is a similar thing as on trigger enter. Oops. This is the same thing as on trigger enter and on trigger exit, on trigger say something like that. Except it's not like a signal, but more like hey, whenever I touch something, this must happen. Okay, on trigger enter is just like a way to give like a broadcasting message. Okay, broadcast is something some people might have learned on Scratch. It's like, hey, if something happens, you need to broadcast this message somewhere else. That is what is trigger is used for. Is trigger is used that, hey, if I touch something, okay, I should say, signal this some sort of message to somewhere else where you could bump up the score or you can turn off the set active or the mesh render of some particular object. That is is trigger. Okay, that's what is trigger is used for. But on collision, is something that just happens right away when you're colliding with something, okay? Something that's just not you, something that's in the environment that's not you, okay? That's on collision enter. Okay, so let's just explain a bit more. It's basically a method using C sharp scripts. So it looks something like this, okay? You have void. Anytime you want to represent a method, you always need to say. It. Anytime you want to tell the computer that you're going to be making a structure of a method, you need to always start with void for them to notice that. Then you need to make on collision enter. O, C, and E have to be capital because it's case sensitive. And in parentheses, you put collision other, and then in the brackets, you put some statement. Okay, it's not necessarily a statement, but I'm trying to say you put anything that you want to execute within that uh, brackets. Now, let's just go back to this. What is this within the parentheses? Well, anything that's within the parentheses of a method, we call it a parameter. We're passing a value, a specific value, any sort of value into that method. Okay, and collision, capital C, is the type of data of other. Other is a type of variable, basically. A variable that's storing something. 
but collision is help is helping the computer to know what type of data are you representing through that variable, right? Other could be anything. It could be an integer. It could be a double. It could be a uh, a boolean. It could be anything. But we did. We never stated that. We never represented that. We never, we never told the computer what it is. So we need to represent something, right? So we call it a collision. It will detect. It will store collision values. Basically, it will store any collision that's around the environment in your current scene. That is collision. All right. So in other words, this other is a variable that's storing all the objects around you, all the all, all the objects that have colliders, right? And that's just storing that if other things, if other colliders are touching your collider, then you know this code operates basically. Okay, and basically, yeah, it, the, it only gets executed. This and this specific method only gets executed, or in other words, it, it runs only if the object, this this method, that's uh, the uh, how do I say? It, it only happens if the object that this method is in, like you attach this method to that object, only if that object touches another type of uh, another type of object in the scene that has a collider, which is called other. That is only when this method will run, the statement that's within the method. Otherwise, it will just never run. So in a way, you kind of think of this method like a if-else statement, right? It's a, it's a bit like that. If, if it's colliding with something, then we run the statement. Otherwise, we just ignore it, right? So that's the idea. So before we actually um, you know, do something more about it, let's actually understand what it means. So let's actually go back. And uh, let's just make a... A new script. So let's go. Let's go to the scripts folder. Let's create a new script. I'm gonna call it uh, object hit, and what I'll do is I'll be attaching this to basically all the obstacles around my uh, around my environment. Now, R R, you, you guys, I mean, you guys might be asking. There are like literally a lot of a lot of things in my environment. So how will I do that? One by one or something? Well, here's a trick. This is why I told you you guys should make groups because basically. I could just uh, click and shift click, right? And I could just drag the object below the component here. And what happens is each of these, each of the objects that I selected, it has the object hit script, as I said. It's just a way to save time, and I just wanted to show you that, hey, that's actually a pretty cool way. And that's actually why you should make groups inside of your game. It just It's just a, a great way of organizing things. and. It's just gonna save your time. At least these situations like this, whenever you never made a prefab, this is beneficial there. All right, so let's actually open the object hit. Okay, so let's just give it a time to open. I think my Visual Studio is lagging, is it? Up oh, there you go. All right, so the cool thing about Unity is we actually don't even need these methods. The cool part is every method is independent of each other. There is no main method like things in Java and stuff. That's a really great thing. Each method is already like its own main method, which is so, so cool. It's just, it's just amazing, okay? I don't think a lot of you took Java, and that's, I think, in a way good uh, because it's just going to give you some pain in life uh, when knowing about that, okay? But if you are, if you're a Java developer like me, uh, then you might be really happy that, you know, you could make as many main methods as you want, and they're independent of each other, and they don't affect each other at all, right? Which is really cool. In Java, though, we have a main method, and it's just really pain. So it's just, yeah, it's just, I'm going to confuse it if I talk more about it. But this is something you should be appreciative of uh, Unity C Sharp because it just saves a lot of time and code. Okay, so let's actually uh, start with the void. Okay, let's start with that, that, uh, that method that we talked about. So it's void on collision. I spelled it wrong, my bad. On collision, enter. Every method has a parentheses, right, which is a parameter. And inside the parameter... We should get, we should pass some you know some value in, so that whenever we put some value in, that's that the, the code will be affected that way. We call that other. Uh, now every code has a brackets, so now we can see that we made a method void on collision enter collision other. Generally, this automatically shows up in your own Visual Studio, and what happens is sometimes you're gonna get private void. Okay, you don't you don't need to really need to worry about that. If that happens, you could keep it or you could also delete it. Doesn't matter. But what happens is if it's private, you can only access this method only in this file, which is the object hit. This means you cannot access this method in other files like in character move. 
Okay, this will be helpful if it's public, like, like if it's void or public. It's going to be helpful to do that if you need to access anything uh, of this thing to another file, right? Like uh, bumping up some points and some, some stuff are in other files and you want to access that. Usually it's great to have it public that way, but it doesn't really matter for now because we don't need to worry about it. We will we'll worry more about this when we make our final project, which is an FPS game. So for now, just chill. Don't worry about it. Okay, so for now, what we can do is the idea is we gave an on collision enter on every single, well, on every single obstacle around us. Right? So let's just give it a moment to uh, <laughs> load. I don't know why it's loading. Okay. Okay. Yeah, my bad. So we can see that each obstacle around us has an on collision enter kind of a method. So in other words, the idea is whenever this thing uh, senses another another type of collider. So let's say this character has a collider. So if the character ever touches the obstacle, void collision enter, right, this this on collision enter will notice that. So if that's true, if 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 that character is hitting the obstacle that that this code is on, uh, then the the statements that I put below here within the statements will be you know will happen. So actually, let's do something. Debug dot log, uh, and let's actually put something in the console, right? Uh, so let's just say uh, I hit something, or maybe the obstacles got hit. <laughs> okay, so let's just save that and uh, you know run the game. I really love Unity sometimes, don't I? <laughs> okay, so if I let me just clear this. And let's run the game. So now, if let's just exit out of this. But if I move something and I hit something, it can say that, hey, the object got hit. Now, if I hit something else, it's going to say again, the object got hit. Now, let's see something else. Let's say I hit this. We can see that that, that happened again. Event from 56 to 58. So that means I hit this thing two times. The cool part is we found a way to make this happen, we found a way to debug information that something is colliding with each other. And that's the benefit from on collision enter. It helps notice that. And what we'll do eventually in this video is we'll find a way to change the color of the obstacle when that happens. Okay, and that will also be your, one of your homework assignments, trying to do that and upload a video of it and you know get really good amount of XP from that. Okay. But before we find a way to do that, before we find a way to change the color of the obstacle, we actually need to learn about one more thing, which is get component. Okay, so let's just learn a bit about get component. What is a get component? Well, it's a type of method, right? Because we have that parentheses. Anything that has a parentheses, just ding, 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 that's a method. Anything that ends with the parentheses, always know that it's a method. But as I said, methods always end with the parentheses. But the thing is, we also have something over here. It's kind of weird, right? It's angle brackets. It's kind of a it's interesting because now we have a parentheses and an angle bracket, so we need to we have both of these things. But what is that? Well, basically, whatever we put inside of this, that is the component that we're trying to access. Well, basically, the purpose of this method get component is to access a specific method from Unity from from the game object that from, from the game object that it is, right? So let's just actually go back. Let's say, for example, uh, on the obstacle, right? There are so many, so many different things. Like uh, like let's say. Like, like, for example, this has a, there is a mesh render, right? For example, it has so many things. And this, in fact, is a component. So if you want to access the mesh render component from this game object, then we would access it from this object hit script. So from this, within this object hit script, we would access you, that, that specific method, uh, uh, mesh render, using get component. All right, so get component is usually helpful if you're trying to, get access some specific type of component in that game object that you've attached this file on, this the C-sharp script, and it is within the game object. So that means you cannot just access a random uh, component if it's not on it. So what I'm trying to say is, for example, if I have a, if I was trying to access Spherical Collider, and, uh, you know, like, let me just move this camera. All right, so if I was trying to access the Spherical Collider over here, yeah, over here, for example, if I was trying to access the Spherical Collider, 
uh, in the code, it's not going to work because I have a box collider. So what I'm trying to say is you need to be real with what you're trying to access. It has to be something that you can access basically. So it has to be within that game objects inspector panel. If you can see that, if you can see that specific component in the inspector panel, then you can access that component. Otherwise, you just cannot, right? Because that's the purpose of get component. You're trying to access a specific component that is attached to that game object. And it could be a problem usually when, you know, when some of these uh, obstacles are not a cube. But in this scenario, mo all of these things are cubes, so it shouldn't really be a problem. All right? So that's get component. You're trying to access a specific, let me just go back to uh, get component. We're trying to access a specific type of component inside of uh, inside of a game object. That's the purpose, All right? So for example, like let's say for now we want to access a specific thing called mesh render. We do have a mesh render in all of these obstacles, so we could access a mesh render using get component and do anything that we want with it. Okay, so for an that's actually basically it with everything I want to talk about. So let's actually do something with it. Okay. All right. So let me just clear this and let's just talk a bit about why mesh render, all right? So we have so many different things here, but we have the specific thing called mesh render. Well, what is mesh render? As I mentioned before, mesh render is something that helps make the object look like the object itself. So let's say we made a cube object in Unity. Well, the mesh render is making the cube look like a cube. So if I turn off mesh render, well, it exists. This, this, this object still exists, and if I collide with it, I will collide with it. It's just that I cannot see it because the mesh render is responsible for rendering that object as it's supposed to be rendering. Okay, and if I actually drop down, so this, I've already dropped down uh, the mesh render. If I go look through it, if I give a deep dive to it, there, we can see that there are like four different things, materials, lightings, probe, additional settings. Right, but the thing that we want to wonder, like we, we want to make sure that if ever we collide, if anything collides with this object, we want to change the color of it. Well, we do know that material is responsible for that. So what we can do is we could use the get component to access the mesh render. Then using that get component, we could access the materials and manually change the color. Right, so that's what we're gonna do right now. Let's actually think about it. Let's kind of brainstorm. So below over here, let's see what we can do. Well. We, we know about get component and all that kind of stuff. So first of all, let's actually start with maybe get component, right? So let's get, get some specific component. We want to get the mesh renderer, right? Now, remember, this is a method, and every method ends with a, well, parentheses, right? Now, we don't have any parameters in this. We're not applying anything, so we can just keep it parentheses as it is and just leave it empty. But let's uh, usually, when we want to access a specific thing within that component, what we do in coding languages is we use dot. Dot is like of that something. You're trying to access something that's within the mesh render and we use dot. Okay, dot material, right? Because material is actually part of that category, that subcategory. We can see over here. Now you might be wondering, wait, why is it lowercase? Well, usually Unity has designed it that way. So it's kind of, you know, kind of a memorizational thing. But yeah, it's also because like the way they, they kind of made it. But what do we want to specifically access? Right, we, there are so many things over here, um, but materials can do anything. So if I press dot, there's so many things I can do, but I want to access the color of it. So I can see dot material dot color, but we need to make it equal to something, right? That's what we do. Equal. We want to set the color equal to something whenever this obstacle is collided with something else in the environment. We use the equal sign to assign that color, right? So usually, if you want to do something, we would say capital C, color. And this is where it's kind of a memorizational thing. If you ever want to assign something, you have to use capital C, not lowercase c. But if you want to reference something, if you want to reference the color category, you make it lower C. But if you want to assign something, remember that. If you want to assign something, use capital C. Now, I've actually assigned, if I go to Discord, I have actually assigned, uh, I have actually uh, uh, given you guys some sort of cool uh, code. Let me just set, take you guys there for a moment. And this place has a lot of options. So this is like all the all the all the code names, like all the words that you can access within Unity for for a set assigning colors. So actually, what I want to assign my color as is maybe, and many people people would do red, but for now I want to try blue. All right. So if I say I want to assign color dot what, well I can s blue basically, and I'll just end it with a semicolon there because every statement needs to end with a semicolon. 
All right, so let's actually save this. Okay, let's, let's give it a try. Okay, so let's just give, uh, make this uh, thing save. All right, this, there was a lot of things to grasp on over there, so I'm really sorry about that. All right, so let's just uh, play. All right, now let's 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 try to uh, collide with some object. Oh, it changed to blue. That also changed to blue as well. Now I don't think you guys can see that properly because well the entire game has changed in color. So let's probably uh, but we, but you can see that once I touch it, it becomes blue. And if I also touch it again, it's trying to be blue again, but you just can't see it because it's the same color. So you can't see whether it has changed or not. Because if it's trying to be the same color all over again and again and again. Well, you can't notice that. But the idea is that whenever I touch it, whenever I collide it with the obstacles, the colors change. Okay, so that's actually pretty cool. We found a way to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to change the color whenever we collide with something. And the cool part is when we stop the game and reset it, it all turns to its original color, which is amazing. All right, so just keep note that whenever you're playing a game uh, and you stop playing it, it will reset to its original value, which was its own specific color. This is what I always say that whenever you're play testing, always record the numbers somewhere on your paper or anything because they will they will like get disappeared uh, because Unity restores these values to its original amount. Okay, I was talking a bit about that in the serialized field, but this, this also applies with uh, what I talk about materials. All right, so we found a way to change the color. All right, so yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of uh, changing the color. But now we want to do something else, right? The final thing that we want to do today is adding a score in our game. So the thing is, there are many ways we could add a score. We could actually add it in the character, uh, in the character uh, script, or we could add it in the test script, or in the object hit script, or in the example script. We could add it in any scripts we want. But the thing is, we should try organizing our code as much as we can, okay? Because if we start piling up codes in just one specific file, it will be very unorganized and it will just give you a hard time to even understand your code, right? So we should kind of like organize things out. That's the specialty of Unity C Sharp. You can make as many C Sharp codes as you want and, you know, be very versatile with it. So the idea here is one of my recommendations is to keep your code organized, kind of have specific codes for each different meanings, right? So every code has its own uh, purpose. So usually people might be wondering, well, we could add a score system in the character, the main character script. But if we see this carefully, this is a character move script. So if we add a score system in a character move script, we can do that, but it's just going to be very unorganized. And it's just going to be hard to reference things in the future when you're trying to add updates to your game. So what I recommend is just make a whole new script. So I'm going to make a new C Sharp script in the, in the scripts folder. I'm just going to call it score. All right, so let's just save it. I'm going to call it score. And let's, let's just think about it. What, where do we want to actually apply it on? Well, we want to apply it on the character, right? Because if you apply it on the obstacles, it's not going to make any sense at all. Like the, the obstacles aren't the thing that's you know playing the game. It's the character. So the character essentially is the thing that's uh, that's really affecting the score system. Okay. So what I think what usually people do first is we want to apply this on the character, right? So I wouldn't want to apply this directly on the object because I made this a prefab. So if I want to apply the score system on every single levels in the game, then I would apply it within the prefab. So I'm going to open its prefab, which is my character, as you can see here. And I'm just going to add the component over here. So if I add the component, I'll just search for score. I'll enter. And you can see that that's over there. So now I've applied the score thing on every single instance of this character in every single level of Unity. So it's just the best way to save your time so you don't have to manually go to each level and do it. It's just a great way to save your workspace. All right, so we made a score and we applied it on the prefab of the character. Now what do we do? Well, let's actually open the score score. Uh, score script all right so there you go um so for, again now we can just you know also remove the start and update script because well they don't really matter and they're independent of each other we can make as many main methods as we want as i mentioned before so again i'll be making a another on collision enter script uh i think it's collider other right and yeah, what, what we want to do is the idea is that whenever the character's collider 
is uh is touching another collider of another object in the scene then we want to change the score of of some variable right we want to change the score whenever we hit something now the thing is what i'm trying to do in my own score system is the amount of times it the character hits something all right so what i want to do is for now i'll be debug.log And in parentheses, I will add uh, the player made. Uh, let, let, let's just see. The player made this many hits. And I'm going to add space. All right. And I'm going to end it with a semicolon. Now, the thing is, the thing that we're missing in this statement right now in this debug.log is, is the variable itself, some score variable. So we need to initialize some variable of score. Uh, so, so the way we do this is essentially we add, we make the variable in the class, not in the on collision enter. If we initialize a variable in the on collision enter, we can only access that variable only within this method, not in other methods of that script. Even though you know the script is public. So, what we want to do first is want we want to make that uh that score thing. So, I'm gonna call it we we we're gonna make a type int variable because we need to always give what type of data type is this variable storing. And we're going to call it a um, score hit. And we're going to initialize it to zero. Always make sure that you give some value to, uh, to a variable. Otherwise, you, you, may, you cannot initialize it. Okay? Could be anything. Usually, when it's nothing, just initialize it to zero. And don't worry about it. It will get affected over here. All right. The goal thing is once you uh, initialize this variable in the class, you can access it in any method of this specific, uh, of this specific class. If I made it private int, then I can only access this variable in this script. And if I made it public int, then I could access this variable in other, uh, in other scripts of this, uh, of this project. But for now, I'll just leave it as int because I'm not going to use this variable in other areas for now. But if you would like to add some additions and updates to your game, you could do that if you'd like. OK, so we, we set this thing to 0. Now what we want to do is we want to make sure. So let's actually add some comments to give some guidance. We want to increase score hit, right? We want to increase score hit by one. Every time that this thing is hit, we want to increase the score value by one and show it on screen, right? So one way that we can do that is there are actually three ways that you can do this. The easiest way is to make it score hit and make it equal to score hit, again, plus one. So what we did here is, you might be asking, wait, score hit and score hit, what, what the heck? Well, no, what I'm trying to say here is score hit, you're going to assign that to be equal to it, 1 plus the value of what it is currently. So right now it's 0, right? So whenever I, the, the character, uh, whenever any other obstacle is uh, touching the character, well, the score hit will increment by the value of 1, right? I can actually change this to what I want, but for now I'll make it 1 point, all right? But actually, the cool part is I could make another variable called points and I could set that equal to one for now right and I'll save it and the thing is I could just score hit plus points so actually if I if I just manipulate this number over here it will just affect the entire code's number of points so maybe in some games you want to say it hits by three points it hits by four points but here it kind of doesn't make sense because what I want to show is it increments Every, by one every time you hit an object, right? You cannot hit an object three times when you hit it once. Right? It's kind of logic there. So for now, we're just going to do it this way. But Unity also has a simpler method to this. Another simpler method, which what is which what I use, is just plus equals one. Okay, what I did here is I just increment it by one. It's just the same thing as saying score hit plus one, but in this manner. If I want to, if you want, if you want to increase, decrease by one, you just put minus one. Okay, but the most easiest way that C Sharp has ever done for us is just score hit plus plus. Okay, this is the easiest way to increment anything. It just what what this two plus means is just you're just incrementing uh, the variable of this by one. You're just incrementing it by one. And if I made it minus minus, I'm going to decrement it by one. Okay, but for now we want to increment it by one because we want to say how many times has this character hit other obstacles in the scene. And obviously if you hit an obstacle once, you can only hit it once. Okay. So 
now we're actually missing one more thing. We have made a variable score hit, but we're not showing that in the log. So the way we show it is by a plus sign score hit. It's, it's what, as I said, what's, what the plus sign does is it helps concatenate. Concatenate means connect two things together in one string. So like let's say one part is a string and the other part is an integer. Well, you cannot put an integer within a string, right? You cannot do that. Um, so what we can do is we can concatenate it and look as it both and mimic it, mimic this thing to look like a string, even though we just added a plus sign. Okay, so let's actually save this and let's actually run this game. All right, so let me just play the game. So actually, let's actually just hmm. Did I spell something wrong? Oh, I, I, my bad, guys. I put collider. It's supposed to be collision. I don't know why. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> so if I go back. Yeah, guys, do not put collider. Please put collision. They're kind of a different, they're different things, basically. All right, so I think it's gone now, the error. So if I play the game. All right, so. So now if I press this and I move the thing and I touch a, uh, let, let's say I touch the, the wall to the side. Well, it says I hit this thing 14 times. Well, it's because I moved the keyboard to the side 14 times. If I hit here, I hit this thing 16 times. And if I move over there, I hit 18 times. But the cool part is that we kind of create, we already created some sort of score system in our game. And eventually what we can do is we can make a UI in the game and show how many times we hit something. It's going to be a really great thing to do, um, and it's going to be a really, really great, uh, over powerful thing, especially for a game. So it kind of becomes a bit more fun uh, to play as well, you know, essentially. Uh, for now, though, I will not really be teaching about UI, but I will be sharing some resources if you would like, if you want to learn that in advance. We will be learning more about these things in the next, in the next game project. Uh, but for now, we've essentially done what we did today, right? Whenever you touch something, the color changes. Uh, when we also touch something, it also changed how many times we hit, right? And that's essentially the score system, and we can clear that out, and everything's gone. All right, so this is essentially what we did today. Today, I taught you about collision, and I taught you about the, this thing called on collision enter, which helps you, which helps the code notice whenever uh, the game object that you attach the script on has collided with another object in the scene. It's the best way to talk about this, right? It's the best way to figure that out. Okay. It's the best way to figure out whenever this happens. It's the w best way to clear things out and make things very simple for your life. We also talk about get components. So if I go to object hit, we also get component of the mesh render, dot material, dot color, which all have to be lowercase because whenever you're trying to reference something, it has to be in lowercase. But if you're trying to sign something, it has to be in capital case. Okay, we talk about get component as well because we're trying to access the mesh renderer component, which has these things that we want to manipulate. Okay, so this is essentially what we did today. We also made a score system as well, which is really great. And yeah, that's essentially, uh, basically, uh, today's meeting. So before, so before I sign you guys off, uh, I'll be sharing some stuff out in the Discord chat, uh, in, in the assignments channel, all the things that you all have to do today. And uh, yeah, that's basically it for today. So if you do have any questions, be sure to reach us, reach me out in Unity and stuff using the Unity. Uh, the Unity, uh, what do you call that? The Unity ping that I made recently. And you could also get that role if you'd like. And also submit the assignments if you can on time to get that XP and stuff. And also share the G new GDC post on Instagram by mentioning our name to get 1,000 XP and 1,000 GDC coins. See you guys later. Peace.